Number eight over here, winner, 12 offensive linemen running sub five seconds in the 40. 12. Men over 300 pounds running sub five seconds in the 40-yard dash. That is the most since 2003. And I can easily imagine many of these 300-plus pound men running downfield to pick off smaller humans on a running back's or a re receiver's way to the end zone. And that's a terrifying thought. It's also a real one because you'll see, like, the check down account for the NFL has some of these clips of, like, Lyle Collins absolutely outrunning defensive backs to go pick off other defensive backs. It is a scary thing to watch. It's also just mesmerizing. This combine was just ridiculous. Like the speed on display. Shout out Chris Paul, University of Tulsa. He's one of those dudes that rent sub four five at 300 plus pounds. You can't run sub four five at whatever pudgy weight you're at. Okay. It's fast. It's fast as hell. And now we got offensive linemen that are doing this. Come on, man. Number nine on this list, another winner. Three more large humans. Okay. Alabama offensive tackle Evan Neal weighed 350 pounds and looked like he might have weighed 310. This is also the man who jumped up and did the splits on like five feet of pad at Alabama. Come on, man. Like, I don't know what to do with that. I don't know what a man that, that is built that solidly, but also that flexibly. There's nothing that I could do that's going to unseat him. As a matter of fact, that might be one of the better offensive tackles that we've seen in, in the last few years. But, you know, I defer to my homie Jeff Schwartz on that. 341-pound UGA defensive tackle Jordan Davis ran a faster 40-yard dash at 4.78 than each of the last three quarterbacks to win the Super Bowl. Okay? So at 4.78, he's faster than Matt Stafford, who ran 4.81. Tom Brady, who ran a legendary 5.28. And Patrick Mahomes who ran 4-8, all right? So another way of looking at this is there are 12 offensive linemen in this draft that are faster than Tom Brady than Tom Brady 20 years ago, okay? I don't want those kind of men chasing me. Six foot eight, 384-pound Minnesota offensive tackle, Daniel Falele, like that was, he's the heaviest player at the Combine since Aaron Gibson, who went to Wisconsin at 1999. He also has the largest hands at the Combine since 99, also Aaron Gibson, at 11 inches. So like Hoyt Wilhelm's knuckleball catcher's mitt, that's, that's what we're dealing with over here. He didn't work out, you know, at the Combine, but he's going to work out at his pro day. But if he doesn't, like, work out in pro football, Vince McMahon, go sign this man, okay? Sign him right along with Gable Stevenson. Also, shout out to the WWE who is going to have their college athlete tryouts later this month at the star. That is a feature that I really, really should probably be there to just watch and see because I love the WWE and I love knowing that there are actual superhumans that are going to go down there and get their Roman Reigns on. All right. Last winner, last person on this list is actually twofold. Okay. North Dakota state wide receiver, Christian Watson and Baylor defensive back, Kalen Barnes. All right. So Christian Watson is the wide receiver darling of this combine draft. He ran 4.36 in the 40. He broad jumped 11 feet, four inches, and he has the kind of hand size at 10 and a quarter inches that reminds you again of the catcher's mitt that Hoyt Wilhelm was using to catch Clint Courtney. I got baseball knowledge like that because I'm that dude. Also check out my 5,000 word feature on Kirk flood on the Fox sports website. I have been working my behind off the bison could become just the second team in FCS program, or I should say, let me go about this again. The Bison could be just the second FCS program. There we go. With three first round picks in a 10 year span. Drum roll, please, for the other program. And while you're thinking about that, so you got Carson Wentz, who, you know, ain't everybody's favorite right now, but still went in the first round 2016. You've also got Trey Lance, who ought to be the starting quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers, but that's just me and probably, you know, your diehard 49ers fans, and could be Christian Watson, right? But the other program is actually Jackson State, okay? So Jackson State had Lester Odom get drafted first round in 93. Sylvester Morris and Rashad Anderson, two defense backs, get drafted in the first round of 2000. 
So at one point, Jackson State had the two best corners in the entire country by that arithmetic. That's wild, right? To say nothing to what Jackson State might actually be, uh, have this year and that they get the HBCUs back on the program after it's been about two years since we've seen an HBCU player drafted. Shout out to a guy that I'm really, really excited about and could be really great in, now I'm blanking on his name. Oh, man. I did this. James Houston the third. See, I got it. One of my claims to fame, apparently, you know, in the college football world is I know all these dudes' names and I have this deep understanding of college football. And then when I need it, sometimes it bails on me. Okay, Baylor defensive back Kalen Barnes ran the fastest 40 in combine history for a defensive back at 4.23. That is one hundredth of a second slower than John Ross, who had the fastest combine uh, 40 yard dash in history. And then there is another freak on this on this list. UTSA's Tariq Woolen, my honorable mention. At six foot four, again, I'm going to say this six foot four, he ran 4.26 in the 40 yard dash. And those two defensive backs have two of the five fastest combine 40s in history. UTSA doing the big things, right? I've been saying it. And that's not even, I think, the best player at UTSA. I think that's Sincere McCormick. But at six four, with that sort of speed, I expect Tariq Woolen to get drafted highly and play a very long time. In the NFL, other reason I like the 40-yard dash is if you ran 4-2-7 at your pro day, like my man Jeff Bidette, who is a Michigan Panther, you get to be a 4-2 dude for the rest of your life. Matter of fact, the homie Dominique Foxworth has this story about running 4-3 at the Combine. He had never run 4-3 before in his life, and he probably hasn't run 4-3 to his math since. But that one time, he ran it, and that's always going to get you a phone call because you're a 4-3 dude. So all of y'all that want to be like, I don't know if he still got the 427 speed. It doesn't matter. He had it and he's still faster than you. Full stop. Thanks for watching this video. And remember, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos on the number one ranked show YouTube channel.